So next topic on Wear Testers Trash Talk with MJO23 Dan and Nightwing2303 from weartesters.com. So the next topic is from R. Bizarro, and he's asking, why are Jordan team models so disrespected? They have a history, and they used to be worn by all-stars. Some of them still are, but even as recently as like Ray Allen, he used to wear Team Jordans, the Jumpman Pro Retros, and so on and so forth. So why, I, I know, and everybody else knows that I love Team Jordans, and it's mostly because that's what I could afford when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. What is it about the shoe that you feel, do you like them? Do you even have any? Yeah, so in high school, I had the Pro Quicks. They're the ones with the the strap that goes all the way from the tongue down toward the toe. The Eddie Jones joints. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those uh, are awesome. Even even then, I was thinking about like how sorry ugly that strap looked. What? Yeah, because you know Jordan is like no, he wants a clean, clean toe. toe. Yeah. I try to remove it off the toe; it still didn't look right. You know, you know they did retro that shoe very soon after that original launch when Eddie went to um, Miami, uh -huh. and they the retro the strap only went to the tongue. The toe was clean. Okay. The most recent retro. They put it back to the original form. Okay. And the heel logo used to be rubber, and it is again now. But that series of retros, they were like black and UNC and black and red. And that series of retros, they had chrome Jumpman. It was crazy to me, anyways. Yeah. I didn't buy that because I didn't like the, the changes that they made. Okay. Well, this was paying homage to the original, so that's dope, though. But mm -hmm. I just remember being being a kid and just actually taking a razor blade and removing that strap. But you actually removed it. I actually removed it. Oh. Yeah. And I rocked it to school like that too, and people didn't even know what it was you know I paint, I painted mine because in a in the back of a slam magazine they had the all-star versions and they had Eddie Jones shoe and Vin Baker shoe the pro mm -hmm. strong at the time and they had right. their PEs cool. super clean yeah and Eddie Jones version was just like the white black and ultramarine but they were all black with mm -hmm. yellow stripes I painted my shoe with model paint oh, wow. which is not a good paint to walk no. around in because it started like cracking, cracking. and stuff yeah. so I walk around with a sharpie to fill in the cracks during class <laughs> so that was way before customizations on shoes was a thing. Is that the only Team Jordan you've ever no, worn? No, so in high school, like the, I had another friend that wore the Team J's, and I'm still waiting for those guys to release in the oh, original color. Oh, the Jumpman color. Team J. Yeah. Oh, I used to the, have that. Those the ones stolen with the, from me with the little shroud. Oh, yeah. Those are hella hard to strap up. Have you tried it? No, that's Man. that's one thing too. I'm waiting for that original colorway to drop, and that's one thing that Which I Which one, the love. black one? The or? black one. The, well, the white and the black one. There was two back in the day. The one that I had was white with white leather, black stripe, and yes. little baby blue Jumpman on the back. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. It. Those ones are clean. They were not comfortable though. They were like kind of slappy. Is it? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe when they Jordan does the pro tro, then that they'll take that approach. If if Jordan does the <laughs> pro tro, which I doubt that they will. But that was definitely a dope model. And then they had the black one with the kind of like the graphite mm -hmm. uh, stripe, and then a white logo. And Ray Allen used to wear both of those. They had some other players that were wearing too. I can't remember who they were. Well, it was what Eddie Jones? There was Ray Allen. There was. Did Eddie Jones wear them, or did he wear his own shoe? Because he still had his like he had his like pro quick series. There was that pro quick. There was the Quick Six, and then there was the Swift Six, the one with the zipper. Mm -hmm. They had like that weird side tongue, like the 15s. Mm -hmm. Those were sick. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you also have Vin Baker that was wearing them too. Uh, well, and Vin Baker had his own line. He had the Pro Strong, the Vindicates, and the Vindicate Twos. Yep. So yeah, he knows his stuff. The Vindicates were crazy, man. They're with the with the half, and then they had the team versions that were only available like at East Bay and like team stores. And then they had the white toe with the suede rear. Ooh, man, the white and red ones were yeah. fresh. Those were the days man like, man if you couldn't afford the regular Jordans then the team Jordans were it well see that's the thing that I don't get like I understand why people nowadays don't like the team J's because they literally are like cheap imitations but back then they were pound for pound the same shoe but $50 less yeah same tech and everything else like that same so. carbon fiber same technology in them like the Jetman Pro was the original team shoe even though it wasn't really an original I would love to know who designed that like whether or not it was Tinker because I don't know if there were other other designers working on Jordans at the time mm -hmm. and then on top of that I would love to know the story behind it because I've always just heard rumors that it was supposed to be the 12 and Jordan didn't like it and so then they redid the shoe and that's how we got the 12 that we got I don't know if that's true or not it's just something that I've always heard like through the grapevine as before like the internet days so like you never know what's true or not even jumping back to the Jordan 
Black Cat, which is supposed to be the Tinker mm -hmm. 13. From what I've read, there's been a whole bunch of sketches that Tinker's had. Mm -hmm. So this could have very well been the early sketches that these team models, w you know, were. Mm -hmm. Oh, you think that the Black Cat could have been a team model? I mean, yeah, it could well, have it's been. It's definitely possible. <laughs> At the time they were taking design cues, this is the Jordan Team 1. There's the Jumpman Pro, then there was the Pro Quick, the Pro Strong, and then these, mm -hmm. right? I don't know if that's exactly the order, but it, they're all right around the same era, like 98-ish. 95 to 98. So this is the team one. These had two things in common with the Jordan signatures of that time. The first thing is the Jordan 12 with the little stripe. And then the second thing was the round logo, which was part of the Jordan 13 campaign. Mm -hmm. And they had that with this little patch right there, the brand of excellence that was on all of the 13's apparel. Yeah. Uh, along with that circle logo and all that stuff. They would like take little things like this little guy right there. That's from the Jordan 12. Little design cues and they would place them in perfect areas on these shoes to still make them feel like a Jordan, but they also felt like their own thing. Mm -hmm. And this particular shoe, carbon fiber plate, uh, heel and forefoot zoom air, nice leather on them, like, I mean, I, I mean, it's a dope shoe. Yeah, when this retro, not, not this colorway, but when this retro, I remember you specifically talking about this piece right here. Mm -hmm. That was the cheap plastic, wasn't it, right here on the... On the you know, I don't know if it was on this one. Mine are upstairs. I really should have, like, been more prepared. But you can tell, like, it, it didn't look carbon fiber. No, it yeah, had that look of carbon stuff. fiber, but it, it looked whack to me. Yeah, and they didn't feel the same either. The leather was really cheap, like, really stiff stuff. Remember, I think it was Glenn Robinson? He used to wear these. Mm -hmm. He was with the Bucks, um, him and Ray, and they used to like do their whole Team Jordan thing. But yeah. I don't even think that Glenn Robinson was like an actual official member of Team Jordan, but he would wear some of them. He's probably in the photos. <laughs> Maybe. So that's my personal experience is that these were just as good. Mm -hmm. They were just more affordable. What I like too about the team models and even going from signature to signature is that even that patch on the tongue, you can tell it's like from the 12. Mm -hmm. Differentiating that between the models and even making them look like they're similar, you know, it created the story all around it that it was part of the brand. Correct. And that's what I think is cool. And that's what I think that the new new Team J's, I don't I don't even like to call them Team Jordans because they're nobody's hooping in them. You know what I mean? Like they're not promoting them. Like they, they had a run during Ray Allen's like uh, all the way up to the cell days where he would play in a retro or a Team Jordan or a Jumpman Pro retro or whatever it was and, and they were still making like performance styled like Jordan team shoes or whatever but mm -hmm. now nowadays they just release stuff kind of like copies and paste yeah. things you know yeah. what I mean from like actual Jordans which that is I think where people started to like lose respect for the line. I've always had this in the back of my mind is there's plenty of people out there that are fans of the brand maybe give them an opportunity to be like hey this Design your own shoe. They do that with uh, the Sean Weatherspoons and well, like this thing, supposedly. <laughs> even though I don't think that this was keep bringing this up. I know. Sorry, <laughs> I'm wearing a pair too. It's really oh, pissing no. them off. Oh, <laughs> so, um, well, but, actually, if you want to, if you want us to go deep into that, we can talk about that too. We'll keep that as a separate topic because that's going to be a whole little juicy morsel by itself. Um, especially with you, these poor things, dude. Um, oh man, they're they're dying. I don't, I don't know, man. I just I have a soft spot in my heart for these. Just as much as I do any of those. Mm -hmm. These back in the day, these were kind of like scoffed at too. And they, these are right around the same time. Like I remember guys on the basketball team having both pairs. Yeah. They would actually buy both colors of these and both black and white and white and black of these and then swap with their friends. Mm -hmm. And then I remember those days. They used to like wear one on each some, other. Some of them owe me my pair back. But oh, what? You were one of those guys? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Like PE, you know, throw yeah. them in your locker and it's like, okay, well, they're yeah. gone. <sighs> <laughs> this to me, this to me is the good days of Jordan brand. Yeah. This is when they cared about performance. And that's I think what is really lost. Mm -hmm. Especially nowadays. I don't think that performance is a focus point on really any brands. Maybe with the exception of Under Armour. And that's a big maybe because they're still lost themselves. Yeah. Well, hopefully, you know, people will figure it out over there. And I hope so. There's somebody over there that likes these shoes over at Jordan Brand because they are releasing the Pro Strongs, the Pro Quicks, the, the Team 2s, the Team 1s. Somebody over there has an affinity for these Jumpman shoes. But you know what that shoe's going to be turning into, right? Somebody's going to turn around, make that shoe into this. You know what, man? It's lifestyle now. It's nowadays, you know? It's That's exactly what I'm saying. There's no focus on performance anymore. These brands are all about what's going to sell and not what's going to play. And it sucks. If somebody turns these into those, I'm going to be kind of salty. Just saying. <laughs> Fresh prints. Dude, come on. <laughs> Good questions.